You should join if you join Discord. Uh, every time I go to get coffee, I announce it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hey, welcome to episode 68 of Front Seat Gamer. I'm Nick. I'm here with Severn. Hey, Nick. And Blake. Hey. How's it going, guys? It's going well, thanks. Great. Good, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You're very welcome. This is your last episode of Science. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, uh, what the you listeners guys? rejoice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they got real hyped for just a second there, and then now they're turning their volume down. Right. Oh, that's it. That's it. I'm done with yeah. this podcast. Uh, you guys been playing stuff? I've been playing some stuff. I've been playing Cuphead. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm a little over halfway through that. I haven't been playing, like, tons of it, because that's a game that... Well, well, we'll get into that in more detail in a minute. Um, uh, and I've also been playing some Hearthstone. There's a Halloween event going on right now, that which I wanted to talk about a bit. It's, it's really cool. Mm. And this morning, I just bought a Nintendo Switch with Mario and Zelda. Mm-hmm. And I'm very, very, very excited to sit down and play that for several hours tonight. Are you annoyed that um, you're going to have... Uh, do, do you think you're going to get a little bit annoyed playing Zelda again? Because you're like, oh, I've been through all this again. And <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I hope not. I ha- I have a theory. Like you think you, you're not, but then that intro area where you don't have all your powers yet, that could be a little bit annoying. Where you don't have the hang glider. Uh, ye- true. However, I now, I mean, I, I now have a, a pretty deep understanding of how to get that pretty quickly. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I got good enough at that game that I can just probably get through that area very quick. Um, I'm, I might, pro- well, I think I'm going to buy the DLC pretty much immediately. Right. And just play it on hard mode. Like, oh, from the get go. Yeah. Cause I've, I've done the game before. I've You're that confident. Well, I've beaten the game before. <laughs> What? It's not confidence. It's just I've done it before. <laughs> so wait, you you really are playing the entire thing again? Yeah, but on I hard thought, mode. Oh god, is that the DLC? Uh, that's one of the DLCs. There's I think three parts to it. There's like the hard mode DLC, which I my understanding is they move around where like monster spawns are, and mm-hmm. it's not quite as like gentle. Mm. And uh, then there's like chests that contain gear which i'm I'm not really too fussed about but i think it just comes as part of the dlc pack mm-hmm. and then the last thing is like a full-on oh there's like a long dungeon thing as well i guess that they're adding and then there's like a, a second story mode that they're adding oh um, wow um i don't i've tried to sort of avoid yeah information about it because i'm pretty sure i'm just gonna enjoy it and mm. get my money's worth anyway uh so i'm not too fussed about like what it actually is because it's just that game's just awesome. Do Nintendo normally do DLC for games? Not often. Yeah, I didn't think they did. What yeah. about transferring a save from one device to another device? What are uh, the what, what's involved there? It's a good question. Probably can't be done. Would be my guess. Uh, yeah, I'm a little annoyed that you know I can't just use my Wii version. Like mm. I already bought that game. Mm. So it's a bit frustrating that I'm, I functionally pulled a Severn and bought the same game more than once. Mm-hmm. But I haven't done it three times. So uh, you, Wayne, you just wait. <laughs> wait until the, yeah, wait until the uh, Switch XL or Switch Lite or whatever comes out. And then the, Those the, feel like very different wait, consoles. Wait, wait, yeah, wait the till, XL uh, Lite. <laughs> the XL Lite. It's really yeah. big and really thin. Wait until the Switch 3D <laughs> comes out and then... Yep. You know, Nikki say that. But I get the feeling that they've released their back catalog multiple times. Oh, and yes. And people have brought them multiple times. Yes. Yeah. I, in fact, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, if you count the number of times I've bought, for example, Mega Man 2, mm. I have a Game Boy version of Mega Man 2. I have, like, I bought the Wii version of Mega Man 2. Mm-hmm. We had Mega Man 2 back in, like, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh, there you However, go. the Game Boy version is different. Like, it's, it's functionally a different game. Ah, it sounds like you're justifying yourself. Yeah. And that was over it's the different man, different that graphics, was over and everything. Twenty year light uh, time span. Yeah, the span, screen so was green. green. You don't understand, yeah, man. Yeah, it's a total game changer, bro. Yeah. It was either green. It or was dark a green. really different game. <laughs> <laughs> different bosses. 
Anyway. They just look different because of the <laughs> graphics. That's, that's all. Some of the bosses were the same. It's the I think it's because Mega they combined some of the Mega Man One bosses into Mega Man Two on Game right. Boy. I've never played a Mega Man. Really? No. Huh. Interesting. Just like I've never played a Zelda until Breath of the Wild. That's oh man. You gotta play yeah. some Nintendo stuff for reals. Blake just shrugged silently. Yep. yep. <laughs> Makes for great audio, Blake. Let me let me do some folder work. Let me shrug, shrug. Yep. Yep. That's some good shrugging. Yep. Uh, well, dude, the, I mean, we've talked about this with Nintendo. Is that like the only reason to buy their console is for their games, yes. and they only have a limited number of games that I'd be interested yeah. in playing. So I'm not going to buy like you know a eight hundred dollar device to play like three games, but. Here's here's my argument against that. You can buy an eight hundred dollar device. Also, it's not eight hundred dollars. It's like six hundred dollars. But you can buy a six hundred dollar device and play their almost entire back catalog on the virtual. Console. Why do I want to play old games? That's true. <laughs> <It's> a good <laughs> point. I can't even get through all the new games coming out. Man, some of those old games are amazing. Yeah, yeah, for real. Can you play? Um, dude, do they have any uh, N sixty four games on there? Yeah. Okay, now you now you piqued my interest. Wait, what, what's, the what's good? Catalog. What's good on sixty four? Mario Kart. Oh. Mario. We, Mario we, Kart. We have that at work. Yeah, I know. I have a, like both of us have N sixty fours at work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mario Kart eight came out on. I'm a sixty four purist. I'm afraid. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. If it's not on that three pronged controller, <laughs> yeah, it, it right. ain't. <laughs> yeah. It ain't Nintendo sixty four. <laughs> it I, ain't Nintendo that, to me. Yeah. <laughs> Looking back, that was a weird controller. That was. Right? Yeah. I like it, man. I do too. But like, dude, the there funny, was so the was funny thing with controller. that controller, I someone pointed out is that you know the the middle uh, grip. Yep. Right. With, with Z on it. Yeah, with yeah. Z on it, and the uh, the the joystick thing. That's a um. That's a Wii Moat thing. It's almost the exact same shape as like a ah, Wiimote. Interesting. Yeah, it's real, That's, real, real. I don't know. I mean, to be fair, the human hand didn't change shape. Between, yeah, I was, like, I was thinking <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> like that was obviously they they built a shape that was comfortable. They didn't go with a square. <laughs> you know, they 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 didn't do the Xbox thing of making the world's largest controller yeah, and then yeah. later going, oh, let's make it actually fit human hands. Yeah. <laughs> Although, God, you know what? I still think that the GameCube controller is the most comfortable controller ever. Which one? The GameCube. Uh, I'm sort of oh, with okay. you there. That they have like some. They had their shoulder buttons that had like analog well, degrees to it, and it was like perfectly curved to the finger. Isn't oh, so isn't cool. the uh, what they call the Pro Controller? Isn't that basically that controller? I thought I bought a Pro Controller today. I don't know <laughs> uh, <laughs> for Switch. We'll find out. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. We bought a, a Pro Controller as well. Hmm. That was all. Oh, just yeah, if you games. have GameCube controllers, I hear that they can support GameCube controllers now. Really? Yeah. yeah. On the Switch? On the Switch, yeah. There's How? a There's a dongle. There's oh. probably a $100 dongle out there <laughs> that Nintendo makes for it. Yeah. So you can still play, what, Pikmin? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Especially with, like, non-HD rumble. It, it might be HD lacking. rumble. That, or whatever rumble. That, that high definition stupid, shake. That stupid feature that a Switch has. Is that it? sounds like that. That HD rumble sounds exactly like. Wait, is this a real thing? Yeah, you don't know about this. <laughs> yeah, you just brought this console. Yeah, dude, you did, you bought that without knowing about the yeah, HD I rumble. Yeah, did not know oh, about man. the HD rumble. You're in for a surprise. You're gonna. I'm excited. Yeah, you'll be like, oh my god, this, this rumble is so HD, it's so, so high, so high def, so high def. <laughs> but that that that's kind that kind of saying reminds me of like sunglasses that are marketed as like HD sunglasses. I've never heard of this. Yeah, what? You, you put them on and you see and like. HD. Yeah, it's those Eagle Vision those ones. Those are just glasses. <laughs> yeah. No, but those, these are sunglasses. Those... These are not prescription glasses. Okay. These are... <laughs> I mean, they're not going to be as good as prescription glasses, no, right? No, the not whole at all. The point of prescription glasses yeah, is these are to... just These are just standard, bog-standard sunglasses that you put on, and they're marketed as being like HD sunglasses. Oh, man. And you see the, these ads, infomercial, where people put them on, and they're like, oh, my God, I can I can finally see the world in HD. <laughs> God. Uh, it just makes me sad for humanity. That makes you sad. There's yeah. a few other things you could probably yeah. name. No, that's the main one. Yep. Yeah, yeah, glasses. Yep. Uh, yep. So, you guys been playing anything? <laughs> Wait, you're going to talk about Hearthstone. What, what's your Halloween? Oh, okay, thing? we can talk about that real quick. Okay, so Halloween. Mm. Uh, they've yep. got a Halloween event running at the moment. The Tavern Brawl, their the, the, the weekly event that they change. This week is basically uh, 
a battle against the AI, and you're fighting a, the Headless Horseman, and they give you three different themed decks to play with. One based around dressing up as a witch, one based around dressing up as a pirate, and one based around dressing up as a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is great. I want to be a sexy cat for Halloween. Damn it. <laughs> um, uh, and I loved that, like, the the cat archetype is just, like, filled with cat creatures and yeah. has, like, a weird mechanic. They've, they've just put some effort into it, and they're they're pretty solid. But the, the real cool thing about the current event is in the arena, when you... Uh, when you're drafting, you choose a class, and then you choose a second class. Whoa. And you get the second class's hero power, but the first class's avatar. Hmm. And oh, you get so to it's... draft cards from both classes. Oh, cool. So you uh, get to play these sort of hybrid decks. And they've never I think they've done some sort of similar stuff for Tavern Brawls before, where you mix two classes hmm. together. But they've never done like a draft two classes together thing, and they definitely haven't done it in Arena. And it's uh, really enjoyable. It means that, like, there are lots of, uh, like, I don't know what you'd call them, like, uh, it, apps that help you pick ar- your arena drafts. Yep. Like, they have card ratings and stuff. Um, and I don't know if they're currently working on this, like, two-class setup, but uh, it didn't super seem like it was, and that has made it more interesting because people are making weirder choices. It's mm. not just, like, what the... <clears throat> what the algorithm deems to be the best, the most optimal choice, um, and and obviously the fact that you have <clears throat> two different classes worth of cards uh, changes the experience because you don't really know what your opponent could have. Hmm. You have to account for more options, but you also get crazy synergies. Yeah, have you found any uh, like OP combos? I haven't played tons of it, um, but like, uh, I, I mean, anything on any weapon class and any class with a self-heal is pretty strong mm. you know because you can just smash things with your face and then heal yourself yep um uh, most like mage plus anything is pretty good because yeah. mage just has a lot of removal so yeah it's, it's, it's mm. quite interesting it's a cool event cuphead yep dude i want to hear about cuphead yeah the game's awesome uh i'm about but you severin <laughs> you look like you want to say something no i don't oh, okay <laughs> you get you go <laughs> Uh, I'm up to like the third of the f- of of four worlds. Uh, every fight just looks beautiful, and they do like it's. I was expecting it to all kind of look like, you know, the 1920s style animation, and it does. But they yeah. do interesting things with it still. Like there was a, a, f- a battle where I was fighting against a genie. Okay. Uh, and the background was a sort of like pyramid city. Mm-hmm. That was rotating, hmm. or, or I guess the I guess we were rotating around the pyramid city, and it looked to me like it was a three D model, like yeah. built out of clay or or like an actual uh-huh. something they modeled, took photos of, and then animated on top of. Um, uh, you, Shivern, Shivern, you're shaking your head. Am I wrong? Uh, is is that actually? Th- does it look good? <laughs> oh, it looks fantastic. <laughs> no, no, the pyramid. Yeah, no, it looks great because it was it was like they built a model, not mm. not three D modeling as in like on computers, mm. as in like they used glue. And, huh. and mil- built a model, took photos of it, mm. and then created used that as the background to then animate the fight on top of. And mm. it looks great. Uh, and then like a, a fight later on was a similar setup where like I'm rotating around an object, except the object was a tower, mm. um, in sort of like a super tall tower. Uh, but that was like hand drawn, and so uh, it looked gorgeous and it looked 3D, but it was like painted. Mm. Uh, and so that game is just just absolutely stunning looking every every fight is like a visual feast and they do these they have the creative ideas for every single monster in the game mm. I, I did a fight against a, a ship last night and uh it's like a pirate who's who's shooting squid balls at me out of a squid <laughs> uh and there's like a big crate that falls on me every like as it passes across me and then like he whistles and some dogfish start leaping out of the oh, ocean man. and they have collars and stuff. It's Dude, so see, clever. This is the crazy thing. Like I've seen some video of this game. Yeah. And it looks like there's so much going on screen. I don't know how you can like keep track of anything. Right. Like yeah. it's just like you're saying it's a visual feast, but is it <laughs> is it too busy? Is it ever too overwhelming? Like there's uh, too much to to look at. But I mean like late on in in fights oftentimes it gets very busy because yeah. 
they slowly layer the mechanics on. Every fight, every boss fight is like three or four stages. Yeah. And it gets harder and harder and harder. Um, and so by the time you're like about to, like uh, th- at that last phase, they might have already layered on several mechanics. So oh, it might okay. be a fair bit on, on screen. So they they like ease you into it. Yes, then. they, they do. don't just throw like what you're saying with the uh, squids being shot at you and and piranha fish or something coming at you and boxes dogfish. and crates dogfish <laughs> coming at you and and all that. That's not like at the very start. No, okay. no. Um, they've also I want to talk a little bit about the fight design philosophy in that game. This also touches on we we got an email from a. a a listener about how we design fights in our game, um, specifically the shaper. Um, but this sort of has relevance to that. They, it seems to me clearly define a gimmick for each fight, mm-hmm. uh, or at least for a lot of the fights. For example, the ship one, the gimmick is there is a crate that moves back and forth across the top of the screen. And if you are underneath it at any point, it'll try and fall on you. Mm. Um, and then everything else that happens during that fight it's just inherently made more complicated because I'm going to be moving back and forth mm-hmm. because of just the general fight mechanics, but I also have to be aware of this persistent crate threat. Uh, another fight, uh, we're just constantly moving to the right of the screen. Um, you know, like the the this is like the the tower fight I was talking about before. Um, I'm on floating cloud platforms, and the f- right. and function of the floating cloud platforms are moving or drifting to the left, and so I just have to. Co- I'm constantly moving and, yep. and I, I have to be aware of where I can move to avoid my opponent's attacks. Mm. Um, and that just inherently makes the fight more complicated. And so it means that they can like use quite simple uh, mechanics, like fight mechanics. You know, he, boss shoots a fireball at you and, and he'll maybe, or maybe he'll shoot two in a row or whatever. But they, because of this, this layered gimmick, uh, that simple mechanic, despite being easy to understand, is hard to like avoid, mm-hmm. um, and it feels skillful when I do it. Mm-hmm. So it oftentimes, although towards the end of the fight it can look busy, the most of the challenge just comes from the slow layering of these mechanics. They also do some really cool stuff to make sure that uh, while you're replaying the same fight, because you die a ton in this game, you're yep. gonna these fights are hard and you're gonna die. And you have to learn the signaling, and you have to learn the yeah. patterns and all this. There's stuff. even uh, I saw there. There's something in the because uh, there's like a hub town or something, right? Yeah. Um, there's like something you can go to that actually tells you how many times you've died. Yeah, yeah. Have you found that? Yeah, yeah. How many times have you died? Uh, well, last time I checked was probably it was like two hundred and thirty something. <laughs> um, <laughs> some of those deaths had been my partner who. She, oh, you're blaming her. Right? She played a little bit and <laughs> yeah. she died. But most of those were mine, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but this is, like I said, this is a game you're going to die a bunch. You only have, like, by default, I think you have three points of life. Yeah. So you get hit three times in a fight and you're dead. Um, uh, and that means that, like, it can become frustrating if you are if you feel like you're not progressing in a fight. Hopefully you are. Mm. But they've also done some things to make sure that if you uh, are, are doing the same fight over and over and over again, it still feels different. Hmm. So, for example, that I talked about that genie fight. Um, the first time I did it, the first phase, he opens, he, he summons up a big, like, treasure chest and opens it up, and some like cat mummies come out and and shoot little cat projectiles. <laughs> and um, uh, and then the next phase, you have to like shoot holes through pillars to fly through them. You're right. on a plane. Yeah. Um, uh. I just I I believe this is the case. I haven't like confirmed this, but I believe if you they often will will start the the, the first mechanic of a fight will be pretty straightforward. Um, and if you make it a few mechanics deep, they'll introduce a new possible first mechanic. Mm. So the next time you play that fight, it might not be the cat missile thing. Okay, it, it might be him summoning swords, or it might be him shooting jewelry out of a crate. And so they they have it. So there's variance within sections of a fight that they slowly introduce as you have mastered them, which is so clever because it's like, okay, you've made it through that section and, and, and the section following it. Now that first section could be something different because hmm. you, you've already mastered one variant of it. Yeah. So now you, there's a, there's a new variant. It really keeps things interesting. And it also mean it, it doesn't ever get overwhelming. Yep. Cause I know first I can beat one variant of it and I, I know I can beat the second hmm. part of that when they introduce this, 
like new variant, it's like, oh, this is still a challenge, but if I can get through it, I know I can do the next part as well. Can you, um, like, if you really run up into a boss that you just can't beat, yeah. can you actually go somewhere else and, and do other things? Um, or is uh, every boss like a brick wall that you just have to bust through? Uh, there are uh, progression walls. Yeah. Um, but usually you have a couple options at least. Okay, that's cool. Last night uh, against this fight with a dragon around the tower, that was the only fight I could do. Yep. It was like the last fight of the island I was on. Right. And it seems like you have to do all of the fights on an island yep. to yep. progress to the next island. So um, It sounds uh, sounds a bit like Dark Souls. Uh, Dark Souls 3. Really? Yeah, yeah. For like that because like there were bosses in, in that game where uh, if you're having a hard time, you could just go somewhere else and go down a different path and, you know, fight a different boss eventually. But then right. there were definitely, like, bosses that you had to beat to progress the game. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Sounds sounds similar. Mm. Um, but, man, really fun and hard. Really hard. How's the... How does it feel? Uh, it feels pretty good. Like, yeah? Uh, the, it's very, very rare that I feel like I got, in fact, I can't really think of a, a, a specific instance where I felt like I got killed, um, by mistake mm. or, um, that it was the game's fault and not mine, mm. which is, you know, what you want out of, mm. out of a tight shooter platformer style game, right? Mm. You want, you want to feel like you're always in control and it always felt like I'm in control. Let's go. Um, how, how long are the platforming? Like sections, because uh, it was like we we all know that this was like originally going to just be a whole series of boss fights, right? Yeah, yeah. They're they vary a bit in length, usually like a couple minutes to like maybe five if you're a bit slow. Okay, um, but the boss fights are the they're there. What you're there? For. Yeah, they're the and, game. Yes, but I mean even the platforming sections are are cool and inventive. Hmm. Um, they're not my favorite. I think I prefer the boss fights. Yep, and I think the primary reason for that is. At least the platform platforming ones I've done, which I assume I've done about half, um, they feel a bit. Uh, at times, they they feel like they lose their consistency. Okay. The boss fights are all consistently polished and mm -hmm. um, and challenging and interesting, and and some of the platforming parts are like okay, they they've upped the variety. It feels like they've tried to put too much variety in this one level. Hmm. Um. Like, there's one where you're sort of fighting your way through a carnival, and the first part is, like, there's, like, wizards that... There's a wizard that sort of appears out of nowhere and shoots stuff at you, and then there's, like, a part where you're jumping on a trampoline over walls, uh, trying to avoid balloons, and then there's a part where there's, like, a guy balancing on a ball, and the wizard is back, and then... Right. Um, there's, like, a, a thing that's shooting snacks at you, and then, like, there's just, like, a ton of stuff yeah. that you, you sort of have to learn to deal with, and what I... Is what I that overwhelming, then? Um, no, but what I think I would have preferred is for them to layer on the complexity in the same way that they do with the boss fights, where yep. they choose a few interesting monsters and platforming elements and create interesting permutations of them, rather mm -hmm. than, like, in this section, like, there's there's three total wizards and, you know, balloons in this section, and then in this totally different section, there's a different thing. Mm. I would have preferred, like, okay, what happens when you add the balloons to this other yeah. thing, you know? Yeah. But otherwise, that game's really fun. Hmm. Uh, I I've heard way too much about like how hard that game was to make from artists. Oh, really? Yeah. Um. It it sounds like I I hope they make that because it's, they seem to be the only studio doing anything like yeah. that. Um. But it sounds pr pretty rough. Well, yeah. It's it's like traditional animation, huh? Yeah. Like, but but also, but also, uh, a typical thing that will happen at a game studio is that a designer will put a thing in. Ask for certain specifications. Yeah. Go away. So the artist was working on a thing. Yeah. And would submit, I don't know, a three-second animation of, 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 say, an attack. And then the designer would turn around and be like, you know, actually, we need a one second for this. <laughs> you know, and, and so this whole thing mm, yeah. happened throughout the right. development. Like, not not great lines of communication between the designer and well, the... Well, they're, they're, I, I think there was a lot of work for certain things. Well, this, this is, like, unavoidable kind yeah. of thing. Um, but, yeah, it sounds like, you know, to draw... Yeah. Just a lot of images of a thing. That's that's not the funnest thing to do. No. 
Um, but my God, it looks so good. In yeah, game. it's cool. It's <laughs> the, cool that the, a lot of people final recognize result is that. So, so fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I hope that it is uh, that we see more exploration into what you can do with two D art in games. You know, I, I, thinking about it, I kind of don't like that they put three D elements into this game. Why? Um, and, and it's not 3D. <laughs> I think when I said 3D, I, you got the wrong impression. I think we should. And I, I'll I've, show you the I've video actually later. seen that boss fight, and I yeah. actually thought it was 3D because okay. it was so uh, well done, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I, I like that 2D style, and when I see anything doing 3D convincingly, like you can do 2D and spin around and have it still look 2D. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That, I do. That tower one you're talking about where you're fighting the dragon, I, yeah. s I saw a video of that and. Like that works quite well because the tower is still like there's not much to it. Mm. It's just a round shaft, yeah. and so I was watching that and I didn't actually even realize it was technically rotating mm. until like you know a, a minute or so into the fight, and right. then you actually see like I can't remember maybe you see some windows or something go yeah. by or something, and you're like, oh, that's you're actually flying around this tower. Yep, you you'd have to see the edges of the tower as well to know that it's the tower, right? Uh, Otherwise, it would look like you're just passing through a lot of windows. Yeah, yeah, no, the the tower is like uh, kind of smallish. Mm, like yeah. you can clearly see it's a tower. Yep. You're not up close to it. No, you're pretty far away. Yeah, yeah. I I saw the genie one and I saw 3D and I was like, I don't think. Uh, I I wonder what kind of conversations went into making that decision. Well, I I loved that the way that level looked. Okay. In particular, because it uh, like I said, what I was expecting was a bunch of sort of looping animated backgrounds mm. and this was a looping animated background functionally <laughs> yeah. but um they used a like traditional like movie magic style right mm. they they created a model and they photographed it in a circle mm. and they played that those photographs in a loop mm -hmm. and they functionally that they animated on top of that and uh so it didn't to me detract from the like charming like hand crafted aesthetic mm. Um, what it did was add uh, some visual variety and and made it feel like I was playing an old timey 1920s like cheaply made movie which that's, was awesome yeah that's cool the the rest of it looks cool i uh, like consistent you know i like that about it yeah yeah the game's super super cool looking and fun um but yeah you're going to die a bunch and it's frustrating if you're not good at platformers mm. you guys playing anything uh yeah, I've been um, I'm playing uh, Shadow of War. Uh, um, I've heard about this game. Lord yeah. of the something, right? Dude, like <laughs> that, like um, there, <laughs> so that there's been like controversy with the loot box stuff. Yeah, and, and um, which I I I think is understandable. Yeah, like I I get it, and I think like, I mean I I didn't buy any loot boxes in it, and I I was talking to um ryan about this uh -huh. he's he uh who, he's been on the podcast before and um he he has a real hard stand on it like he's absolutely not buying this game because of it mm. and um he was saying uh that um he's he's not really uh he doesn't really care about the loot boxes in like this game mm. what he's really worried about is like in 10 or 15 years mm. With like the premise that these kind of loot boxes set, like in ten or fifteen years, are games gonna be? You can't finish them unless you right. you buy loot boxes. Ooh, that's and a dark that, feature. That's the that's the thing he's worried about. Whereas mm. like, uh, because uh, I'm I'm playing it and I'm like, who cares if there's loot boxes? Don't buy them. You don't even need them. Mm. But if enough people do buy them, the pub the makers or the well, publisher may you know, add to this dark future that uh, Ryan is worried about. Here's the thing I don't like about them, is the, the the existence of those loot boxes has changed the design of that game. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess it has. And that, uh, if that game sells well, yeah. despite, uh, if those loot boxes sell well, if, if those loot boxes make any money, yeah. it's basically, if the game still sells well, it's basically... Um, validating their decision to yeah, put yeah. loot boxes. And that's in. and and that's the thing. It's like I don't like these loot boxes, but I still bought the game anyway. And yeah. so I'm still like You're part uh, of the problem. Uh, yeah, like, I'm I'm still kind of voting with my wallet here saying I'm okay with this. Yeah. 
even though I'm not buying any loot boxes. Right. But the, to 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 the person just looking at the sales numbers, they're like, everyone's fine with these loot boxes. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Is it in your face? Uh, it's not really, but they do a very annoying. Uh, not not really annoying, but like just something a little bit sneaky where. When you pause the game and you see, like when you pick up loot and, and when you get skill points, uh, you pause the game and you go into, like, you got some options where you can view the nemesis mm. nemeses, and you can view your um, inventory and stuff. And they have a little glowy icon for when you have a new skill point to, to spend or a new uh, item in your inventory. Mm. And so you get used to uh, clicking on that as like, oh, I've got a new thing, I'll, I'll check it out. Mm. They also have that on the... Ma- like the market uh the market option mm-hmm. oh like there's a new deal well i think they just always have it on there what to be like to they get you into the the, oh, the state maybe there is a new so deal i haven't gross. i don't pay attention to, to if there's any deals on there yeah. but they they get used to yeah. oh check out this new thing here's a new thing in your inventory here's a new skill point new thing new thing and then you're like oh marketplace new thing what wait a minute why am i in the marketplace yep. <laughs> yeah 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 that's um yeah, favorite. <laughs> it's I I don't know like how's the game? The game is the game is cool. Like I I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> um people have said it's like like I think the worst I've heard is like it's just like the last one. Mm. But I really enjoyed the last one, so right. you know, that's great. Mm. And um they uh they kind of there's there's something that I wish that they'd done uh with this one where um leaning up to it coming out and like it's e3 presentation and all that it showed these forts that you take over and you have your own like nemesis uh what would you even call it like it's not nemesis a crew yeah you have your own crew of like you've got your war chiefs posse yeah Yeah. you got you got your gang you got your army you're building an army you Mm -hmm. you assign these captains and you can assign a bodyguard to yourself so (laughs) which is real cool like you can get into a tough fight and you click this button and you're your best buddy shows up yep. and like I picked this dude that's like an orc guy who, well, of course he's an orc guy, but I picked this dude that's like, uh, he summons, uh, those Karagor creatures and they, they, they're, they're like big, uh, hyena wolf oh, things. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they just wreck like that. They're, they're sort of a, a neutral creature most of the time that will, uh, that the orcs keep in cages and you can like shoot the cage, uh, well, you can shoot the cage and it busts them out and then it'll attack all the orcs in the area. Mm. And like a couple of them can really take out a lot. And this dude summons these guys That's cool. and they're his pets and therefore they're on my side as well. And mm-hmm. they just like wreck everything in the area and is is real cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you can assign these guys to like uh, infiltrate the enemy fort that you're going into and they'll then like have to challenge the existing like war chief and and do all this stuff and it's really it, it that stuff is really really cool mm. but the thing is like, i've talked to other people who have played it you don't get to that until like 10 hours into the game mm. and uh, up until there it's exactly like the the, the old original. game yeah it's yeah. in every way it's exactly like the old one um and like that's still fun like it, that 10 hours i spent basically just running around killing everything and that was a whole bunch of fun because i'd done it before but if you were already i don't know kind of not enjoying that as much as as i was you right. would get burned out and i i have a mate that played it for three hours and was like ah oh, this is exactly like the the old one i'm i'm gonna stop playing wow um and i i was starting to feel like that but then i you know i knew that no there's more to this there's a lot more this is yeah. like a fraction of the actual game this you know this is a shadow of the game <laughs> what's crazy to me is that's also like okay we, we work on a free-to-play game yeah. where you know you can play three hours and if the game's not for you you know that's fine yeah yeah you, you haven't put any it's money also in like necessarily it, it's also a very expensive game too. yeah so only play three hours of it i was just like dude yeah. you gotta at least try and get your money's worth because you know there's better <laughs> stuff <laughs> coming three, three hours deep in a hundred hour i mean hundred hundred dollar experience yeah. or whatever and then go Oh, this is. I didn't like the first one that much, or or this is too much <laughs> yeah, like the first yeah. one. Like that's a hundred bucks that you yeah. just spent. Like if you saw a bad movie, yeah, <laughs> and you spent twenty bucks or whatever for two hours, yeah, and you walked out you'd after, be, you'd you be, know, you'd be sour. But yeah. like multiply that by five times, and yeah, yeah. and especially because like 
like like I was saying, I was like, yeah, this is a bit like the first one, but I knew that they had had all this yeah. fort stuff, like half, like over half the stuff isn't even unlocked. Like, but that to me is also it sounds like a bit of a design failure. Yep, for sure. Like that, like that's what I was kind of like, hint, like trying to trying to say. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, it that we we have a concept that we we follow from um, like some other games that use this put your new put the cool stuff at common yeah like uh put it put it in an act easily accessible location mm. so that players can experience it quickly and start learning and enjoying yeah the thing that they want they came to play yeah and i um, think like um i i was because I, I, I was thinking about this like why did they have this whole like it, it was only bloated out to 10 hours because i ran around and enjoyed myself so much like i think you could still do that it because you you have to get through the main story to do it and the main story man it's not I mean, you, you i mean we were talking about story in video games a while back like this is one for the this is this is one you can chalk up to <laughs> oh that's crazy yeah man. it's it's oh it's yeah. it's the most base it's the story is not the game. Like the Nemesis system is the game, and the mm. fort stuff is the game. But like oh. you gotta you gotta slog through these story missions to like uh, get to the actual game where it's like <laughs> you know the fort stuff and taking over forts, and then you unlock the whole map, and it's like a risk, um, you know, risk the board game type thing where there's regions that yeah. these that these forts control and you're taking over these forts and then that whole region turns blue because you own it right and then the enemy can attack your fort and take it back so you got to build up the defenses of that yep um it's that stuff that stuff's cool and yeah. um if if they had not like if they just had maybe a couple of story missions at the start yeah or and even then like it's, and then it's that because it is a it is a crazy big system and i and i wonder like if if someone hadn't played the first game, mm -hmm. just the Nemesis system alone is a lot to like take in. Yeah. And that's probably why they uh, gated off the, the fort stuff at first, because yeah. that's, that's a, that's a crazy thing to get your head around is like, these guys keep, keep showing up and calling, you know, calling me by name and, and the whole like hierarchy stuff and all, yeah. and all that. So, um, but like, they could have done a, the fortress thing earlier. Like, yeah, for what, sure. What you could have done is subdivide the first, like, region you're in. And yeah. have it be like, you got to conquer a town or whatever. Yeah, like, and instead they've got it so that you already own the fort. Well, the, the, the forces of Gondor already own the fort. Yeah. Um, and that can seem maybe confusing because it's got humans standing in the nemesis system. Like, the, the view where you see the army... Where you see all the orcs, there's human guys standing on the fort, like uh, icons, icon things. Yeah, and because they're the ones in the fort, right? Um, and then in, when you go and attack enemy forts, it's you know the orcs that are that are there. But like that's that's a bit weird. And you're supposed to be defending this, and you you do certain things. Yeah, you're killing so many orcs, and it never feels like you're actually like making an impact in this area. Right. You know, because the time you make an impact is when is later on in the game when you take over these forts. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's a. I hate, I hate to be like, just stick with it for ten hours and then it gets good. <laughs> I would, but, then it gets better. But like, because it's already pretty good. If how you like how much time did you put into the fortress mechanics? Like, like I've pretty much only just started right doing that. Um, I've heard from other people that to like get the quote-unquote good ending. Right. I don't know what they really meant by that. I assume it ties into the fortress mechanic. I yeah. assume it means, like, to conquer the world or whatever it yeah. is. Uh, without buying loot boxes, <laughs> yeah. it's going to take you a couple months. I don't I don't know, because, like... Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. Well, yeah. I'll, 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 Time will I'll tell. find out. But, yeah, yeah but the, something I noticed is that um, you... So there's two types of currency. There's gold coins, which you buy with real money. <sighs> Those are the ones that, that that's good stuff. You want the loot boxes. Yeah. yeah. That's 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 where all the good stuff is. Uh -huh. <laughs> the fact that you have to buy currency yeah. in a game that you already bought. Oh yeah. Um so makes and then me there's angry. then there's, there's silver coins which you just pick up in game and you can buy loot boxes that are just silver ones. Yeah. And I was I accrued like thousands and thousands of these silver coins and being like, are these just to buy loot boxes? But then I took over a fort and all my defenses and uh, upgrades for the fort require 
the silver coins. Right. So now I'm like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. It is actually more than just a, a, a collectible for to buy loot boxes with. Yeah. You know. And now I'm actually like, okay, now I'm in. Now I'm interested in getting more of these coins. So now there's also a, but now there's like competition for that silver currency between, like, game mechanics and and market mechanics. And yeah, but like, yeah. Um, Ugh. but the th- it makes me angry. Yeah, makes no, me it, angry. It, like it is. I'm not gonna sit here and just be like, no, man, it's fine. The loot boxes are just completely fine you're, because they're not. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're you're funding a bad regime. Yeah, I know. Like, that's the thing. Like, if if this you're it funding would be, the Taliban here, I would have such an easier time <laughs> no, shitting on these loot boxes if it wasn't in such a good game. <laughs> yeah. What what gets me is it's a single player game. Yeah, it's a single like that, that's <laughs> like that, <laughs> yeah, that's the, that, that's the kicker. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and well. Y- you can uh, apparently <laughs> attack. No, you can totally attack uh, online players' forts. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's that. But, but it's it, so, is like that even the, worse. The, I don't know. I, uh, like probably. the challenge is completely different because some people like have put money into their forts. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. I know. That's what know? I. That's what I'm like. I don't want to attack anyone because they're gonna have spent real bloody money. They would yeah. have, you know, spent. So that's not cool. Yeah. Spend real money to upgrade your your in-game fort so that other people can't attack you. I'm like, mm. that's not. I don't like that. Um, Everything about that game just sounds gross to me, honestly. T- t- tell me, this this is more about like the Lord of the Rings universe. Yeah, what what's cool that's left that isn't in the movies? Is, is there anything from the well um, that they can take? Like, I I I don't know, man. Like that 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 game is the Nemesis system, mm. and that Nemesis but is system, it just orcs? Uh there's 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 ogre type dudes, which is pretty, cave trolls. Cool. Yeah, there's they're they're actually like uh smart. Like there's one your main guy is like this Aussie uh th- this Aussie like He's just troll a straight guy. up Australian. Yeah, he's straight, I know he's just I know straight the guy you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like and that's the thing. That's the thing that I think is uh really weird is that the main guy, the main two guys are like the they're just the most generic pieces of shit. Mm-hmm. Like the main, Aragon looking guy. Yeah, the yeah, the main guy like is a is a Boromir Aragon mm. like look alike, yep. just deadpan like we've got to we've got to save the city, blah blah, yep. blah. And then the your Alvin Spirit guy is this angry elf guy that's like we need to get the ring, blah yep. blah, blah and it's just these these two gruff people and then you you meet the you you meet the like uh intelligent orcs and they haven't they're just having fun. Mm. <laughs> like one of the best one of the best cinematics I had was like I took over this uh, fort and like uh, this uh, orc from uh, one of the previous games happened to be there and he's yep. he's like um, he's like your wise cracking sort of sidekick type guy mm. and then there's the Aussie guy and the 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 conversation between those two was like just great and I was like how come they wrote these guy characters so fun mm. and the main guys are just like bummers that's a that's a very good question my theory because we get this a lot in games is your character is meant to be a blank slate yeah but and you're meant to be able to sort of project i mean that, that yourself onto them but that's boring right but the thing is he's he's not a he's not a blank slate in the way that like uh commander shepherd is a blank slate right He's a blank slate because you have no dialogue options or anything. He's not a blank slate like Geralt is a blank slate. Right. He has a name and a past, and he's a character. Mm. He's not just dull. He, he's not you. He's just a yeah. boring and like dude who has an angry voice, elf voice in his head. Like <laughs> he's always shouting at him about getting the <laughs> ring back. What are the uh, What are the elves doing? What are the dwarves doing? Uh, I haven't seen any dwarves this sucks or man elves. This i don't is think that cool. oh, i actually know there is an elf in it uh one elf yeah yeah she Screw she's this game <laughs> she she shows up and like she, she's pretty cool she's just like she's kind of um she's as competent as you are at like taking out orcs and stuff like that and there's mm-hmm. this there's this one mission where um you need to get intel from some orcs mm-hmm. and these guys are called worms and they show up in like in your HUD in your view or whatever as having an icon over your head. So that means when you go and like uh, dominate them, their minds, mm. uh, you can get info on the war chiefs and and the captains. Okay. Mm. So you can find out their strengths and weaknesses. It's just like the first game. Um, but she she isn't into getting intel. She just wants to like go and kill people. 
kill these uh, orcs. So you have this thing where you're basically racing to, you're trying to get to these guys to get intel before she like works her way through this camp to kill everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's that's really cool. I really like that. So your like ally that. is hell bent on murdering. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you're trying to like well, maybe play it a little smarter than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I really <laughs> like that. I was like, this is kind of cool. And she's yeah. just as confident as like as as killing these guys as you are. So yeah. she's because almost every other character, um, ally type character you either have to escort somewhere or protect in some way. And she's here's, just like, I'm just going to rip people to shreds. It's here's my question. Why do the forces of evil always go for quantity over quality? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, why not? Why not? What would you, how would you like t- tell us your, <laughs> tell us how you would be a better dark well, Lord? <laughs> I, well, I would start by recruiting the elves. Right. Well, they don't want you cause you're, you know, a big well, what monster are you gonna, guy. Yeah. How, how are you going to get them on board? Just problem. Well, here's the, well, here's the <laughs> thing. You can murder all the orcs you want if you're on our well, team. Mm. Well, here's the thing. Like, uh, uh, originally, the Sauron kind of did get the elves on board because uh, the this this is not a spoiler. This is known in the game and since the first one that the the spirit the elf spirit that's inhabiting your body is the guy that made the ring who was tricked by Sauron uh, into making it. Cool. So he did use the elves in in a way, but then just went to orcs. Yeah. <laughs> I think the thing is that orcs minds are, are easier to dominate. Right. I guess. Yeah. I guess that yeah. like it's it's easier to like manipulate the dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess. Yep. But it's not as fun. They were more racist back in the day, you know, like elf back back in the uh, Tolkien universe. <laughs> in the Tolkien days? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back, back in the Tolkien days. <laughs> yeah, they were just all racist. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, but dude, like, you uh, asking if, like, there's dwarves and stuff, I really hope there are because, like, it is, like, the game is fun, but, like, you do kind of forget that it's more than just one guy killing a whole bunch of orcs. And in yeah. the first one, it was like that, like, it, it just was killing orcs and you're the only, basically the only human. And, oh, man, here's, here's, here's a story thing. Bloody... Bloody Golem shows up. Bloody Golem shows up. Mm. And I, I swear to God, it's just like like it's a cameo. Uh, and I re- Andy Circus comes along? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Andy incredible. Circus just walks out. Catch me in my new like, movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's wearing the ping pong suit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's wearing that ping pong suit. And he's like, watch Black Panther. I'm in like- <laughs> yeah. um, uh. But no, he just shows up and he his, his whole thing... All he does is lead you from one, uh, like mission point to another, and he's doing his whole, you know, the whole Gollum act the whole way, and he's j- he's seriously just there to be like, remember the movies, yeah, remember Lord service. of the Rings. This uh, is Lord of the Rings, guys. Yeah. Remember how much yeah. you love. Does those he movies? look like the Lord of the Rings Gollum? Yeah, yeah. He's he's Gollum in every way. I don't even I don't think Andy Serkis voiced him, but I mean, come on, that Gollum voice is not yeah. not tricky to do. Yeah. <laughs> And I heard something about Shelop as well. Oh yeah, actually I do. She's hot. Oh man, she's so hot. Right? She's so hot. <laughs> but then she turns into a eight woman, links? so it's like, ah, oh, <laughs> oh, give me that spider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but it's cool. Like she, yeah, she. For some reason, people had a problem with that, but it's like it's magic. This is a world of magic. She's like a giant spider. But you're a little too easy with magic. Like there are certain. Yeah, but Lord of, of the magic. Ring. Lord of the Rings is not. A hard fantasy where the rules of magic are well defined. Mm. Magic is there to just move a story forward, like you know. I don't like it. People are taking liberties, man. With, <laughs> with this, this magic system, yeah, with this there is magic. no magic system in Lord of the Rings. It's just magic. And like, how the hell does the ring work? And why does it give anybody any but you're, power? You're saying people are shape, sh- well, spiders, well, you know, shape shifting. Well, the thing is, like, I like okay. The way I see it is that she's. She's projecting what uh, Talion, the the main guy's name, mm. even the most generic name, <laughs> like, <laughs> like it, yeah, he, she, she's projecting what uh, would be comfortable for him to see, and a, and a, a oh, hot, actually, hot, what's right there is a huge, yeah, spider. is a huge horrifying spider because there's parts where like you see the spider like clinging to the wall, and it's like coming down, talking to him, and as it sort of like turns into like black mist and fog and then turns into her and she's still she's floating mid in mid air going down and i'm like that's because she's still a spider holding on to the Web. wall holding on to the walls but he's seeing a lady and not the the eight legs holding on the wall so he just sees this woman magically floating down mm. and he's fine with that 
He's fine with that. He seems surprisingly <laughs> fine. Is there ever any physical con- like he goes to give her a hug? Uh, or he, he does. He does. But like again, he like can a, just be a, a human hug. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, regular. So, sort of. But again, like from an outsider's perspective, yep. like I would have really liked it if um you because you're basically seeing like he's the point of view character. You're you're seeing through him. But I would have loved to see like from another point of view where he's just standing in front of a spider like hugging the the air. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Like you know, like he's he's hu- he's hugging her and she's giving him a vision, but then you cut to like a third party that's just standing just there, and he's it. just like in front of this giant spider, like with his eyes closed. <laughs> but but also like shape shifting is quite a power yeah. to have, right? But projecting a uh, you know a um, an image into someone's mind is is much less of a power than shape shifting. I I think it's pretty powerful. I mean, yeah, it is. But like shape shifting, you can turn into anything. Mm. But well, what I'm saying is, is she the only one who's doing it? I, I think so. Screw this, man. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't understand your problem, man. It's okay. magic. Yep. It's not even like, don't oh, worry about it. Fine. Okay. It's not like Tolkien is not heavy on it. It is not hard on, That's on what magic does. And to hear it's just dudes and orcs is yeah. kind of sad. Like if you want, if you want some hard magic rules, like, uh, Brandon's, uh, Brandon, yeah, Brandon Sanderson. Sanderson yeah. yeah, he has books that are like this. Is, he sets up the rules of magic, yeah. and everything follows those. Yeah, that's his thing, though. Is he yeah. creates magic systems? Yeah, he basically. creates magic systems. Yeah. Whereas, like Tolkien and like Harry Potter, it's just like magic is just I every every anything. Yeah, anything we you want. We watched Hocus Pocus on um, Netflix. Oh, is that that? Night. I think I remember it's the one that. with Bette Midler. Yes. Um, <laughs> Didn't it have? It had that chick. Uh, had didn't it have uh, someone from Sex in the City, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. Yeah. Yeah. She was, yeah. She was one of the witches. Yeah. Um, and I was realizing, like, okay, so they they do this stereotypical witch thing where they like read a, out like a long, oh yeah, chanty poem from yeah. a book and throw some ingredients in a pot and the magic words and the yeah. ingredients together work and make a thing and blah blah blah. It made me think, like, okay. Someone wrote that poem down. Like, someone had to come up with that. But obviously, like, it's not just some random words. This is, like, the thing that works yeah. for the for the power that they want. So does that mean that there are people who are just, like, sitting in front of cauldrons, throwing ingredients in, writing poems and saying them and seeing if they work, and then, like, crossing them out and trying new uh, things? Like, they're literally sitting there experimenting? Oh, you mean to to like a like scientific like the scientific method for, <laughs> yeah. for magic? Well, like, well, okay, let's say okay. Picture picture witchcraft like a, a thousand years ago. Yeah, uh, there are fewer spells. Yeah. because they just they haven't. You know, people. Well, I are, think people are trying to be witches or whatever. Yeah, and they're like, okay, I want to do a spell where I can turn invisible. So what if I throw some eye of newt in here and then I say some stuff about invisibility? Nope, didn't work. Let's try putting some fish scales in you're there talking instead. About the, uh, you're talking about the alchemy system in Skyrim. Well, I mean, that's... I, you I just, can't fathom another system. Like, how how else could it work, uh, right? Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you how. Uh, and, the, and the, Wait, before you finish, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me ask you one more question. Does that mean that these spells just don't work outside of English? Ooh... No, let me tell you. Let, okay. me, let me tell you. Go ahead. Uh, the devil told them how to do it. Ooh. So the devil speaks English. Uh, the devil speaks the language he needs to. So he'll come along. So, so it's so English. He, so <laughs> it's, yeah. well, so it's he's in your they're English. Speak English. Or, yeah, because they're English witches. If he went to like China, he'd be speaking a different language to the Chinese witches. Mm. Okay. So does that mean that he's the a devil ma- just again, knows all he's of the He's a magical languages? being. This is the exact same argument as she love. <laughs> it's magic. Huh? It, it, it just does oh, what I you need it, it to do. Magic. It's yeah, magic. Yeah, yeah. The devil's magic. The de- uh, yeah, okay. Well, of course he is. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. He's shape-shifting it's, words, I just, basically. Yeah, in, I in picture, your brain. There's a part in that movie where the witches, like, raise a zombie out of a graveyard. Yeah. And it just, like, does that mean that, you know... A thousand years prior, someone was standing in a graveyard yelling poems and yep. hoping the zombies would rise up. And well, what's What's funny with this whole thing is like you're you're thinking that there was a process into discovering. There them. has yeah. to be. Wait, right? someone someone would just wrote a poem one day and was making a really gross dinner. Yeah, and then they turned invisible and was That's like, "Wait was. a minute, it was entertainment." And yeah, dinner. 
But how would they know that they're turning invisible? <laughs> <laughs> when they look down to like see where, oh, so they can't see yeah. they're invisible to yeah. themselves. Like I can't. I'm holding a fork, but the fork's just floating. I'm eating this food, but I can see it in my yeah. stomach, and it's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I put I have Newt in Why here? Why did I keep eating this? <laughs> Tell um, this uh, bloody modern health food. I mean, I, maybe all magic spells are just people shrooming, and they think yeah, they turn yeah. invisible, but they're just shrooming. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm invisible, dude. No, you're shrooming. Dude, I, I remember this is a complete side thing, but do you ever remember that um, Adam, not Adam Sandler, oh, man. Uh, damn it, I can't remember his name. Um, ben Stiller. Do you yeah. remember his that movie from Adam the 90s? Sandler. Yeah, I know. Do you remember okay. that movie, um, uh, Mystery Men? Yes. Yeah, and there's that guy that could turn invisible, but y- only, only when, when no, no one, one looked at him. Yes. <laughs> so yes. Good. I loved that. And they asked him, how do you know when you're invisible? Then he's like, I just feel it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I, I, I do think there has to be a process of discovery here. That's you and your 20th century, yeah. like, kid. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, okay, so then... If if there isn't a process of discovery, your claim is that the devil tells the them this devil or some sort of demon or something. Okay, came so that along means and was like the demon is writing poetry. The devil is writing English poetry and saying we, this, we is, know that this, this is this is not the real. poem. This is the poem that will make you into a younger woman. I think. Like, I think. Okay, here's the thing. This explains a lot about goth poetry. Here's, I will say yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, here's here's the thing. It's po- <laughs> like it may just be like it may just the poem may just be a, a placebo effect where like. It's just the ingredients that matter. <laughs> Maybe it's just like the intent or something. Just being like, in the right state of mind. Yeah, if you, if you you know if you think that uh, saying this poem and making this potion works, then oh. it will kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know. It's Look, like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm, I'm not. This is not a real thing. <laughs> this, is, I, <laughs> this is this is what I like. I I think I think about this from time to time, like. Because you got the Salem witch trials were a real thing that happened yeah. where mm-hmm. real people were burned at the stake yeah. because they were accused of being witches mm-hmm. and found guilty of witchcraft. Yeah. They didn't know the, the 10 Nobody moments, back then said, well, hang on. Where did they find out the spells? How did they the, find out the spells? The How devil, does any of this the work? The devil. That's where they got <laughs> it all from. They're consorting with the devil and all that sort of stuff. So, Nick, they owned a and black then, cat. Enough said. You take that, that next leap of logic, leap of logic, which is like they okay, don't. Well, the, the, the devil, don't take the, the devil next... is visiting them and telling them English things. Yes, like, it is. They don't take that next step. <laughs> is that the next step? Well, it's, what would your next step be? Uh, I well, my my head yeah. is is somewhere where people suck. Like I don't <laughs> give people anything. So yeah. if someone accuses someone of being a witch, yeah. I, I you immediately think, agree with them, yeah, <laughs> because because they have I, to be they because suck. I'm a I'm a people, yeah, <laughs> because I'm a witch. So. <laughs> yeah, no, but dude, like what, the <laughs> witch funny how you that way, dude. The, the the witch trials is just finding a scapegoat for problems in like their community. Like yeah. that's it. They're just yeah, like, yeah. oh, we had a bad like turnip harvest oh uh, it's not even that it's more like i think she's sleeping with my husband yeah. she's a witch yeah yeah <laughs> but it's funny to, to 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 give like the cauldron like it's a silicon wafer type <laughs> idea and then like yeah all these components yeah are yeah into it. well that's functionally what it oh, yeah. is right and it, the operating system is you just, just you saying, chant at yeah. it it's saying the more the right <laughs> yeah, words act, activate it what happens if you say chant. the wrong word does nothing work or do you get like a kind of it yeah, kind it, of it's like of clicking on the desktop buggy. background. It's, it's yeah. like you, you're doing nothing. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, that's why, you know, that's why Brandon Sanderson is cool because he's got like a proper magic system. Yeah. That makes sense. I do and he think sticks that, to it. Yeah, having some logic to a system yeah. like that. It makes those helps. it makes those stories way more enjoyable because like, yeah. like Harry Potter was, you know, a fun time. But like magic was basically free energy in that right. in that world and like well why don't the 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 wizards and witches like power the entire world yeah <laughs> you know why aren't we running tesla cars running on like i don't know hocus pocus <laughs> mojo <laughs> yeah well that's that's i mean harry potter is a fantastic example of like where did these spells come from yeah. isn't it funny like you you assume like Instead of just transporting people around with magic, you you have to buy a car and then transport. <laughs> well, and then you got to monetize car. it somehow. What are you? T- <laughs> consider consider Harry Potter well, for a second. It's all capitalism. You can't have bro. all this like, free energy everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Got to monetize it, man. What are you t- 
Yeah. Consider consider Harry Potter. But you have for- to buy these loot boxes. <laughs> see, like in this world oh, with man. magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we've got silver spells and gold spells. Yeah. <laughs> the silver spells will work. No, on- she oh. can shape shift. <laughs> but if you give me a hundred gold coins, <laughs> I-, <laughs> um, I think Harry Potter is a really good example because. In that, they literally okay. You have got your magic wand, yeah. Which, by the way, someone has to, someone determined that a, yep. a stick with a thing in it. And there are better, <laughs> there are better wands and worse ones. There are the expensive ones <laughs> yep. that I don't know do magic better. Yep. <laughs> so where's the magic coming yeah. from? And and then they have magic words that they have to say yeah. to do the effect. Someone's got to be standing in front of a mirror or like in the, like there's just a, a bunch there's of people standing around for that man saying yeah. saying. <laughs> They probably got a science department. And they swing their arm. Nothing yep. happened. Okay. Cross out Habadoo Chubapalop. Habadoo Chubapaboo. Nothing. Okay. Well, well that's how many permutations that's, can that's there why be? That's why all like, that's why all these sorts of things, they like the source of magic always comes from some like other like higher power type thing. And Harry Potter does it? I don't know. See, that's. Yeah, but I mean, she like, she's not going to, I don't know if she's written like the. Harry Potter equivalent of the Silmarillion or anything yeah. like that, where the entire like creation myth, myth stuff happens. But like, well, clearly wizards and, and normal people are different. In that yeah, well, universe. wizards are basically so a, like some sort of angel line. type creatures. Wizards. Yeah. So that's the weird thing is like in in like there's so much magic in Tolkien, but like the wizards aren't actual like people. Oh, in in Tolkien, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're they're sort of like these like demi angel yeah. or something like they're not actual like there's no there's no people going around being like my class is a wizard you know yeah and and what's interesting in in tolkien's magic is there aren't like magic phrases really are no there. it just happens yeah Gan- gandalf just does like does a it just does the thing does the thing yeah and it happens yeah and that's much cooler because that's like yeah he just wills it yeah and that i believe I, that to me is more believable <laughs> somehow <laughs> than like a yeah the, no, you're a right. magic a magic phrase you're, that someone dude, figured out. Like <laughs> s- saying that these are showmen, Nick. Dude, <laughs> that's what it's all about. S- saying that you've pretty much like articulated a thought of mine playing uh, Mordor was yeah. that there's these towers. It's an open world. It's got towers. Yep. You climb up. Not, the- <laughs> not a Ubisoft <laughs> game. It's not a Ubisoft, but it's an does open it, world game. Does it reveal the map? Uh, it it <laughs> do, it does sl- something slightly different, but um, <laughs> the 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 map is already revealed in the beginning. Oh. What you're revealing, get this, collectibles. Oh, <laughs> fuck this game. That's or, it. All or right. rather points of interest. <sighs> collectibles and points of interest. Yep. But um, yeah, there's there's you go up there and originally like it, Sauron has it. So when you go into your uh, elf vision, which is the same as like, um, you know, in Horizon, her uh, focus thing mm. or whatever, or in Geralt's like witcher vision. Is that thing. what it's called? What? Is that what it's called in The Witcher? Witcher Vision? Yeah. I don't know if it's ever called anything. Okay. Um, Witcher goggles. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, Batman's detective <laughs> oh, mode. Yeah. yeah. You know, Batman's Batman's detective mode, right? Yeah. yeah so you go into that and Bat you... Bat goggles. Yeah, you see above these towers, you see the eye of Sauron, okay. right? And then when you take over those towers, you see uh, a blue eye, meaning you you have that. Uh, um, but he got, climbs up there and he goes up to, like, this crystal thing. Yeah. And he... Uh, it's the, the the elf spirit uh, does some hold, holds his hand over and does some like power thing and then mm-hmm. says a bunch of elf words and I remember thinking like what's what's the point of the words like it would be so much cooler if he just went up there and just did it yeah you know the, you yeah. the words the words <laughs> make it seem uh, tacky yep you know yep I agree yeah and I I was playing thinking that and then. You just like basically said the exact same yeah. thing in general, anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, we're in agreement. Magic yeah, yeah. is magic with words is dumb. Yeah, don't don't use don't words. use words. Yeah. If you have to say a thing for a spell, yeah. explain why. You have to have so, like a reason. Okay. What and, about when uh, when Ryu throws a fireball? I think that's just is. <clears throat> I think that's him. it's just theater. It's just think something he says. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that's just an intimidation. That's just a tactic. sound. You know, it's like right. when uh, this is a Bruce Lee thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like when Scream people play it, tennis yeah. and you just hear them being like, ah! okay. <laughs> it's just yeah. like that. You hear them going, <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's act it's like a nervous twitch, but 
<laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. he's fighting. He's anxious. <laughs> yep. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I think that's all I wanted to say about Shadow Wall. I, 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 I really genuinely do, genuinely do enjoy it. Mm, yeah. Um, and I enjoyed the first one, uh, but I never finished it because it became more of the same. Mm. And this, you know, with the new stuff, uh, maybe it'll eventually become more of the same, but it's still it's still pretty damn fun. Uh, can can you see a third one having more of this kind of loot box action? Oh man! Or do you I, hope I, it's more of a refinement and a return to what? A, a refinement pure, of loot boxes? A, yeah. A, a oh pure man! Pure experience where <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe less I, of that I I hope that, but like like the outcry from people are saying we don't want this, mm. but the sales numbers are saying we're okay with this. Yeah. So, you know. I, I hate it. Yeah. I, I, but I, I wonder, like, mm. I think the problem will be that there'll be enough uh, whales, you know, that, for listeners, that term, whales, mm. um, meaning there'll be enough, like... Big spenders. Big spender. There'll be yeah. a small enough... There'll be a small amount of people spending... You know, the, thousand bucks, or a thousand whatever. bucks to justify having this in more uh, uh, games. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'll, obviously, I mm. hope that this is like negatively impacted their reputation enough yeah. that they would reconsider. But yeah. we'll see. I guess time will tell. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, um, right. I mean, Ryan is is saying he's not buying it because of the loot boxes yeah. until I'm, it's like know, under I, twenty bucks. I don't think he was going to buy the game anyway. So, <laughs> so, he's, so that's a that's a empty <laughs> empty gesture, he's empty protest. Just saying like I, I just don't like this game, and on yeah, top probably. of it, they're charging garbage. Yeah, um, yeah. They're uh, their DL. They announced their DLC uh, season pass. That's like a hundred bucks. So I heard of this. Yeah. Did they also have day one DLC? That I I don't, I, I don't know. If it, Zelda also had day one DLC, which is a bit. I don't support this shit. No. no. I, I hate it. Um, how much time do we have? Should we just go I around to questions? We, we're probably out of time, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure if we've got... Uh... Man, I, I had a thing. You have a thing? I had a thing, but I, I think maybe I'll just bring it up on the next episode. Oh, man. Give us a tease. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask. Yeah. Do you have to tell people off... At work, are, are you hitting up people at work, and how do you go about doing this? Is that something you do? Ooh. Because the last couple of weeks, there's I've had to talk to some people. So there's not. Uh, Wait, in regards to what? Doing their job. Oh, <laughs> yeah, not not really like that. There's stuff that um, like there's stuff I've said to people to be like, hey, you should do things like this. And do you do the classic sandwich? Yeah. Um, no. Nah. Because it's not it's not anything huge. Yeah, it's yeah. a thing of like, hey, just remember to do that. One yeah, thing. yeah. And then you just carry on. There doing was your there own was thing. there was stuff early on. Um, I remember being like, yeah, no, this is not great, mm. and to fix it, and it was fine. But that's when that person was quite new, so okay, you give them a bit of a break. Um. All right. Well, let's ask a question, and then then we'll. Uh, this is this is a good one. I don't know if we've ever asked this one. Uh. This is from Lore Weaver fifteen. Lore Weaver. Mm. Whoa. Lore Weaver fifteen. Uh, Charmander, Bulbasaur, <laughs> or Squirtle. Dude, this we've, question. We've had this before, this, have we? Yeah. Yeah, we probably. Or when we when we are deep in Pokemon Go. <laughs> yeah. Haze. That one. That. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. Two it's weeks. been a while. Then. But that. That. To be. All right. Well then. That question was from back then, like. Was it? Almost a year and a half okay. ago. Yeah, I think when George. Um, yeah. Was on, but well, um, that wouldn't have been me because I, I was been on with George. Oh, yeah, okay. but I was I was Squirtle. That's why I don't recognize it, Squirtle? Yeah, and you guys were like, we're just doing it for the Bulbasaur. I mean the the uh, the Blastoise. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I I've do it always, for the Blastoise. I've always been a, a Bulbasaur fan. I like the weirdness of Ivysaur really? and Venusaur. Like, is yeah. what what animal is that? It's a plant. But, not, not an animal. But okay, but <laughs> ignoring the plant. It's part. a it's a it's a turtle with a. It, with a plant no a you're shell. Just, <laughs> squirtle is a turtle mm. <laughs> what Bulbasaur get out of here Bulbasaur is like honestly I don't know yeah I, I, don't, I actually don't know because he doesn't have a, a head cat, like a turtle right? <laughs> it's, he seems more like a wombat with a plant on his back oh, actually, yeah, yeah that, okay. would, that would be like some. it's yeah. just like a big bulky mammal mm. but in, like I couldn't pick what mammal it is he's a he's a Bulbasaur <laughs> he's not a he's a Pokemon he's not a mammal Charmander's pretty clear Salamander yeah. Squirtle's pretty clear. Turtle. Yeah. 
Bulbasaur. The a saur makes me think dinosaur. Yeah, but it doesn't really well. Resemble he's a he's sort of I don't know. Maybe he's just like a a general amalgamation of a herbivore dinosaur with a with a plant on with a stink Amazon <laughs> plant on its back. He doesn't. Is he? Does he have scales? It doesn't look like he's got scales. No, I don't think so. You got to see those. High I think wombat was quite ones. accurate. Yeah, this would also good. make. He doesn't have fur though. Well, we don't know what he has. I it's, don't know. It's, it's not really the, clear the fidelity of the lines is yeah. not. You, you know. gotta you gotta see those uh, like high like zbrush versions of uh, yeah, Pokemon. That's that realistic like, Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, that's like frighteningly realistic. Yeah. Um. All right. We should. Yeah. We should. We should wrap it up. Uh, if you've got questions, email at uh, frenziequestions at gmail dot com or tweet at frenziecast. Facebook dot com slash frenziecast is our Facebook page. Frenzygamer.wordpress.com is our WordPress site. We read comments on there and reply to them sometimes, I think. Do we ever reply on there? WordPress? Yeah. 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 Uh, mostly the last few comments we've had is just uh, so, uh, one of my listeners uh, reminding me to put the link to the download on the on the picture <laughs> because I, I, I sometimes forget. And, and you should feel hot shame because of that. I do feel hot, hot shame. Yeah, the hottest of shames. Uh, YouTube.com slash front seat cast is front seat cast. Let me try, cat. Let me try that again. <laughs> oh, that's our mascot new, new podcast, dude. I think, <laughs> I think you just invented a mascot, the front seat cat. Front seat cat. <clears throat> YouTube.com slash front seat cast is our YouTube page. Uh, you should rate us on iTunes and tell your friends. Uh, we had pretty good listenership from the last episode. Don't know why. Probably nothing. Probably no reason. It's probably you and you. Probably me. Yeah, yeah, probably me. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, hashtag uh, we're we're a uh, uh, part of the Australian Australia Asian Gaming Podcast Network. That's hashtag AGP on on Twitter. They've also got a Facebook page. Yeah. They're doing a big. Uh, they're all at PAX right now. Oh, that's Aussie cool. PAX. Yeah, doing a big thing there. Well, good luck to everyone there. Huh. Yeah, we're not uh, there. Is anyone filling in for us there? No, no. We're like a weird. We're like a weird growth. <laughs> on we're the, the tumor. <laughs> yeah, we're like a weird tumor that everyone kind of. Acknowledges is there, but it kind of doesn't think about. It. Damn it! Yeah, <laughs> like a benign. Although, tumor. Uh, yeah, a tumor implies growth. Like, like <laughs> <laughs> they are more just like a a lump that. Yeah. You, you you're not really sure how long it's been there. It yeah. doesn't seem like it's hurting it doesn't you. Seem uh... <laughs> we'll just, molish. We'll just we'll just molish. keep going. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and of course, thanks Leanne for our logo, and thanks Andrew for our music. We'll be back in a couple weeks. Uh, I'll be playing Mario all that time. It's gonna be awesome. Bye! Why does everyone want me to stop playing Hearthstone? Just let me play the game I want to play. <laughs> it's like, what are you... So good. Play the game I want you to play. Yeah, really. Um, I'm going to talk about Hearthstone this week. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, and Cuphead. Oh, cool. fuck. Yep. Fucking great. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, did you want to skim read those or, or like... Uh, yeah, read? all right, I'll have a quick read. You guys can talk amongst yourselves right. if you want. Or just, actually, if you could both just sit in total silence. We'll just stare you down. Total silence. I can hear breathing. Who's breathing? (sighs) (sighs) This is is my watching Nick. (laughs) Breath. (sighs) 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 So creepy. That is so awful. Please stop. <laughs> oh, nope. Don't like just, it. Just keep breathing. This is the last episode of the, this podcast <laughs> I'm going to be on, I think. So, the episode where things get too sexy. <laughs>